while we're waiting here for our tour, look at what we have behind us. So behind me is the Ark of Constantine. Constantine the Great, the Emperor of Rome. And this Ark is one of the most important, in my opinion, one of the most important um, Christian sites uh, um, that, that is related to the development of Christianity in ancient Rome. So let me tell you a little story about how this Ark came to be, what led to it, and what happened afterwards. So let's travel together back to the 4th century, year 312. Rome, Roman Empire is going through a civil war. There's different contenders as to who's gonna rule this empire. One being Constantine, who will later become the Constantine the Great, and the other one is Mac Maxentius, um, the, also an emperor that is ruling Italy and Northern Africa. Now Constantine decides to face off Maxentius in the final battle of uh, Milvian Bridge. Now, the story goes that the night before him and his soldiers got this um, sign from, uh, from the Christian God that said that, um, and some, some sources say that it might have been a dream that Constantine had the night prior. And it basically said, if you paint um, the symbol of Chi Rho, which is the first two letters of Christ's name on the shields of the soldiers, you will win this battle. So Constantine being a Roman pagan, um, you know, for whatever reasons, uh, decides to try it out. So he, he does paint the holy symbol on his shield and against odds wins decisively the Battle of Milvian Bridge. In the process, Maxentius actually dies, he drowns in the, in the, in the, in the river and then his body is later uh, resurfaces and they behead him and send them to Africa later on. So it was a decisive bloody battle, about 25,000 people from each side um, clashed and so um, so that's what happened and um, C C Constantine basically becomes the sole emperor of the Roman Empire and to commemorate that he builds this Ark right here. It is a victory triumph Ark of Constantine the Great. And so the Ark itself actually has no Christian symbols. There's no Christian symbols, but uh, it sort of speaks of a divine intervention that led Constantine to winning the battle. And of course, that's the first ever imperial sort of um, imperial message on the Christianity because in 312 the the Christianity is outlawed you know if you're found to be a Christian you're gonna be killed right so this is serious stuff so obviously we don't see Christian symbols here but Constantine attributes the victory to Christianity and as a result that starts the process that would eventually transform Roman Empire from being pagan to to becoming Christian. This is where it started. So this this arc behind us basically symbolizes the starting point of Christianity's origin in the Roman Empire. How cool is that? Like this is this is so fantastic. Uh, we'll walk around and I'll show you more. But um, this is where it began, right? And then just a year later, when Constantine is already in power, uh, we have Edict of Milan, which basically then legalizes Christianity and makes it okay to practice it. So you will no longer be thrown in jail, uh, you won't be martyred, you won't be thrown to the lions and, and the, the Colosseum, as they did to Christians for, for literally 100 years. So ever since Christianity took root, um, you know, Romans did not like it. And um, Christians were brought right to this place and uh, many of them were just thrown in there, fed to the lions, martyred, beheaded, whatever. Um, they, were, they were sort of evil, evil pagans considered by Romans at the time. So this is where history changes. And as a result um, of Roman Empire becoming Christian, then it starts spreading the Christianity through its, um, through its um, 
you know, colonies and, and through its um, ecosystem of roads and towns so that it built for thousands of years, thousands of years, right? So then we have a sharp race of Christianity throughout Europe, Middle East, um, you know, Eastern Europe. Uh, it's, it's really, it's really a fantastic place to see because this is where it all turned around for Christianity. So why don't we uh, walk up closer and check it out and see some of the symbolism in the columns there. Wow, look at that. That is so neat. Okay, I'll try to go in the shade here so the sun is not blocking the view, but oh man, look at that. Here we have soldiers fighting, so one of them will most definitely be Constantine, I would assume. So here we are, guys. The Ark of Great Constantine. Constantine the Great. The triumphant Ark of Constantine, but also, in a, in a way, the triumphant Ark of Christianity in Rome. You know, this, like I said, this marks the beginning of it all. This, within a few years, Christianity will be legalized. And then within a hundred years, most of the old pagan customs will largely be, well, first defunded, and then was due time outlawed. You know, you can sort of imagine what it was like when they unveiled it, you know, the emperor would triumphantly ride his horse or chariot through this ark and there would be people gathered here around the forum area jubilantly cheering him on you know there would be petals of roses flying from the sky maybe somebody would stand on that ark right there and shower the emperor with the petals of roses it would be a fantastic fantastic view in Oh, just right here. Huh. Very unique place to be, that's for sure. Very happy, actually, that we had to wait in line for so long because it gave us a nice opportunity to take, take a closer look at this, spend a little bit more time, and not rush to other, other artifacts and buildings of history and somewhere on here there is actually an inscription that basically translates to inspired by the divine and a lot of people have attributed that to um, to Constantine's uh, religious development at the time so that's where he would basically be contemplating what is divine and obviously this new god that helped him win the battle, he would consider that to be divine, and that would be, of course, the Christian faith. But you know, I want to just reflect on something uh, that I said about this arc, and um, I'll show you guys more of the places of executions there in, in the Colosseum. But, you know, it is, it is sad that, you know, for hundreds of years, Christians were persecuted and killed just for their beliefs. And um, that was a normal of the time because Christianity was a minor, minor ideology back in the Roman, ancient Roman times in the first and second century. But then when it came to power, you know, after, after Constantine basically transformed the Roman Empire, within a few hundred years, the pagan ideology of ancient Rome became the minority. And then that ideology started to get persecuted in, in the toughest ways possible. There was executions, there were, there were all sorts of things. And of course, we all know the, the Great Inquisition, you know, people being burned at the stakes for maybe different beliefs, or maybe even, even if they didn't believe the Christianity to the point that some people wanted them to believe. So it's, uh, you know, it's, I'm not saying that any ideology is um, 
responsible for that, I think it's more to do with human nature. You know, we take an ideology and then we sort of make it, and then we put our stamp of uh, human nature on it. And it is, and human nature is not always the nicest. You know, it's very primal, it's very aggressive. And so, um, so you can have, you know, even peaceful ideas like Christian, Christian ideas, but to be used to, you know, kill thousands of people. So, you know, I, I just think it's always important to remember that there's a large difference between the philosophy of a religion or an ideology and the perception of it by humans. And because you have to take account the human nature. And, uh, and the human nature, unfortunately, doesn't change that much over centuries. Largely, we still have the same instincts, uh, you know, the same impulses, the only thing that can change it is, of course, education. So the only way to break that cycle is to educate yourself, understand the world, learn, right? That's the only way you can you can breach that gap because, you know, as we've seen here, as things, like they say, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Same here, you know, first it was the Romans that oppressed the Christians, then it was the Christians that oppressed Roman pagans, you know.